In this presentation, we are going to discuss the equivalent mechanical systems. While solving the problems based on analogous systems, it is always better to convert the mechanical system which is given in the problem into its equivalent mechanical system. It makes the problem simple and then after that we can easily apply the force voltage analogy or the force current analogy. So in this lecture, we'll be discussing the steps by which we can convert a mechanical system into its equivalent mechanical system. Okay, so let us discuss the steps to draw the equivalent mechanical system. And the step number one is to identify all the displacements in the system due to the applied force. In the previous lectures, we have seen that whenever a force is applied on mechanical system, there is a displacement. So in step number one, we have to identify all such displacements in the system. In step number two, we have to identify the elements which are having different displacements. So, there are certain mechanical systems in which the number of displacements is more than one. So, we have to identify the elements which are having different displacements. Now, in step number three, we have to represent each displacement by a separate node. So, we will represent each displacement by a separate node. Moving on to step number four, elements having same displacements are connected in parallel. So, according to this step, if two or more elements are having same displacement, we have to connect them in parallel. Now, moving on to the step number 5, the elements causing same change in displacement will get connected in parallel between respective nodes. For example, if the net displacement in a spring is x1 minus x2 and the net displacement in a damper is also x1 minus x2. So, we can say that the net displacement in the spring and the net displacement in the damper is same which is x1 minus x2. So, we will connect this spring and this damper between two nodes x1 and x2. We will discuss this in detail in a while. So, we are now done with the steps by which we can draw the equivalent mechanical system. Let us now take some cases in order to understand that how we can apply these steps in order to draw the equivalent mechanical system from the given mechanical system. So in case number one, we have a mass resting on a fixed surface and a force Ft is applied on the right hand side. And due to this applied force, there is a displacement Xt to the right hand side. Now this is our given mechanical system and we need to draw an equivalent mechanical system by applying these steps. So let's start with step number one in which we have to identify all the displacements in the system due to the applied force. So in this case, the applied force is F of t and the displacement is xt. So in this way, we have identified the displacement in this mechanical system. Let us now move on to step number two in which we have to identify the elements which are having different displacements. But we can see that we are having only one element which is mass m and it is having only one displacement xt. So we can move on to step number three in which we have to represent each displacement by a separate node. In this case, we are having one displacement xt. So let us represent this displacement xt with a separate node. And now we will consider a reference level with respect to this node. And we will now connect this element which is having the displacement xt between this node and this reference level in this way. This represents that this element of mass m is undergoing a displacement xt. And this is the equivalent mechanical system of this given mechanical system. If you observe the step number four, it says that elements having same displacements are connected in parallel. But in this case, we are having only one element. So we don't have to bother about step number four. In the same way, step number five says the element causing same change in displacement will get connected in parallel between respective nodes. But again, we are having only one displacement, so we don't have to bother even about step number five. And this is our complete equivalent mechanical system. Similarly, let us consider one more case in which we are having a spring of spring constant K, which is connected with a fixed support from one side. And on the other side, a force F of t is applied on the right hand side and due to this, the displacement is x of t. Again, if we want to convert this given mechanical system into its equivalent mechanical system, we have to apply these steps. So starting from step number one, we have to identify the displacements in system due to the applied force. So the displacement in this system is xt. In step number two, we have to identify the elements which are having different displacements. 
But in this case, again, we have only one element which is having only one displacement. So we don't have to bother about step number two. We can directly move on to step number three in which we have to represent each displacement by a separate node. So we are having one displacement xt. Let us represent this displacement by a separate node. And again, we have to consider a reference level with respect to this node so that we can connect this element between this node and this reference level. So if we connect this element between this node and this reference level, the equivalent mechanical system will look like this. See, we have connected the spring of spring constant k between the node xt and the reference level. And this shows that the spring is undergoing a displacement xt under the applied force. Moreover, we don't have to bother about step number 4 and step number 5 at this point of time because we are having only one element in our mechanical system. Now let us consider one more case in which we are having a damper having the coefficient of viscous friction equal to b and it is connected with a fixed support from one side and on the other side we are applying a force f of t to the right hand side and due to this there is a displacement x of t to the right hand side. And now we have to convert this given mechanical system into its equivalent mechanical system. So let's start with step number one again in which we have to identify all the displacements in the system due to the applied force. So we can see that there is only one displacement which is xt. Now we have to represent this displacement with a separate node. So let us represent this displacement with a separate node and a reference level with respect to this node. Now we will connect this damper between this node and this reference level in this way. We can see that we have connected this damper between this node xt and this reference level. And this shows that this damper having the coefficient of viscous friction equal to b is undergoing a displacement xt under the influence of applied force. So in this way, we can draw the equivalent mechanical system from the given mechanical system. So we are now done with case number one. We will now move on to case number two. So moving on to case number two, in which we are having a mechanical system in which there are two masses m1 and m2 lying on a fixed surface. A force f of t is applied on the right hand side and due to this the displacement in mass m1 is x1t to the right hand side and the displacement in mass m2 is x2t to the right hand side. A damper of damper constant b is connected between these two masses and hence the net displacement in this damper will be x1t minus x2t. Now we have to draw an equivalent mechanical system from this given mechanical system. So let's start with step number one in which we have to identify all the displacements in the system due to the applied force. So we can see here there are two different displacements. The first one is x1t and the second one is x2t. In step number two, we have to identify the elements which are having different displacements. So we can see that in this mechanical system, we are having two different masses m1 and m2. The mass m1 is having displacement x1t and the mass m2 is having displacement x2t. Moreover, this damper is having the effective displacement x1t minus x2t. So in this way, we have identified all the elements which are having different displacements and we can say there are three different elements which are having different displacements. The mass m1 which is having displacement x1t, the mass m2 which is having displacement x2t and the third element is this damper which is having the effective displacement x1t minus x2t. Now moving on to step number three in which we have to represent each displacement by a separate node. So we are having two different displacements. Let us represent displacement x1t with a separate node and the displacement x2t with a separate node. So we have to consider a reference level for displacement x1t and one reference level for displacement x2t. Now we can see that this mass m1 is undergoing the displacement x1t. So we will connect the mass m1 between the node x1t and this reference level in this way. Similarly, this mass m2 is undergoing a displacement x2t. So we will connect the mass m2 between this node and this reference level in this way. Moreover, this damper is having the net displacement x1t minus x2t. So we will connect this damper between these two nodes in this way. 
and we can see that one node of this damper is having displacement x1t and the other node is having displacement x2t and hence the net displacement in this damper is x1t minus x2t. So in this way, we have converted this mechanical system into its equivalent mechanical system. Let us consider one more mechanical system in which we are having two masses m1 and m2 lying on a fixed surface and a force f of t is applied on the right hand side and due to this mass m1 is undergoing a displacement x1t and the mass m2 is undergoing a displacement x2t. Moreover, a spring is attached between these two masses m1 and m2 and the spring constant is equal to k. And now we need to convert this given mechanical system into its equivalent mechanical system. So again, let's start with step number one in which we have to identify all the displacements. So we can see that there are two displacements x1t and x2t. Now moving on to step number two in which we have to identify the elements which are having different displacements. We can see here mass m1 is having displacement x1t mass m2 is having displacement x2t and the spring is having the net displacement x1t minus x2t. In this way we are done with step number 2. Let us now move on to step number 3 in which we have to represent each displacement by a separate node. So in this mechanical system we are having two different displacements. So let us represent these displacements with a separate node x1t and x2t. So we have to consider a reference level for node x1t and one reference level for node x2t. Now this mass m1 is having displacement x1t. So we will connect this mass m1 between this node x1t and this reference level in this way. Similarly, this mass m2 is having displacement x2t. So we will connect this mass m2 between this node x2t and this reference level in this way. Moreover, this spring is having the net displacement x1t minus x2t. So we will connect the spring between the nodes x1t and x2t in this way. We can see that this node of spring is having displacement x1t and this node of spring is having displacement x2t. So the net displacement in this spring will be x1t minus x2t. So in this way, we have converted this given mechanical system into its equivalent mechanical system. So in this way, we are done with case number two. Let us now move on to case number three in which we have a vertical mechanical system. We can see here there is a fixed support and this damper having coefficient of viscous friction equal to B, the spring having spring constant equal to K and this mass M are hanging on this fixed support. A force F of T is applied on downward direction and hence there is a displacement X of T downwards. And now we have to convert this given mechanical system into its equivalent mechanical system. So let's start with step number one in which we have to identify all the displacements in the system. So in this case, we can see that all the three elements are having same displacement, which is xt. And there is no element which is having a different displacement. Moving on to the next step in which we have to represent the displacement by a separate node. So we have one displacement xt. So let's represent this with a separate node which is xt and now we will have a reference level with respect to this node and we will now connect all the elements between this node and this reference level. In the step number 4 we discuss that all the elements having same displacements are connected in parallel. We can see here this damper, this spring and this mass are having same displacement xt. So all these elements will be connected in parallel between this node xt and this reference level. So firstly, let's connect the mass m between this node and this reference level. Similarly, we will now connect this spring between this node and this reference level. And at the end, we will connect this damper between this node and this reference level. And in this way, we can see that these three elements which are having same displacement are connected between the nodes xt and this reference level. And it represents that all these three elements are having displacement xt. And this is the equivalent mechanical system of this given mechanical system. I hope you got this. In this way, we are done with case number three. We will now move on to case number four. So moving on to case number four, let us consider this mechanical system. 
This is a very interesting vertical mechanical system in which this is a fixed support. There is a damper B1 and spring K1 connected with one side from this fixed support and from the other side they are connected with a mass M1. Now there is a damper B2 and a spring K2 which are connected from one side with this mass and on the other side they are connected with a mass M2. A force F of T is applied on this mass M2 in the downward direction and due to this there is a displacement X 2 T downwards. Now we know that if a spring or a damper are connected between two masses then there will be a change in force and due to this there is a change in displacement in mass M1 which is X1T. So in this mechanical system we are having two different displacements X1T and X2T. So let us now move on to draw the equivalent mechanical system. So if we start with step number one we have to identify all the displacements in the system due to applied force. And we can see that there are two displacements X1T and X2T. Moving on to step number two in which we have to identify the elements which are having different displacements. So if we observe this mechanical system carefully, we can see that this mass M1, this damper B1 and this spring K1 are having displacement X1T. And if we observe this damper and this spring, we can see that one end of the spring and this damper is having displacement X1T and the other end of the spring and this damper is having displacement X2T. So the net displacement in this spring and this damper will be X1T minus X2T. And hence we can say that the damper B2 and the spring K2 are having displacement X1T minus X2T. So in this way, we are done with step number two. We will now move on to step number three in which we have to represent each displacement by a separate node. So in this mechanical system, we are having two displacements X1T and X2T. So let us represent the displacement X1T with a separate node and the displacement X2T with a separate node. So we will have one reference level for node X1T and one reference level for node X2T. Now we can see that the mass M1, the damper B1 and the spring K1 are having displacement X1T. And from the step number 4 we know that elements having same displacements are connected in parallel. So firstly let us connect the mass M1 between the node X1T and the reference level. Similarly let us connect the spring K1 and in the same way let us connect the damper B1. And we can see that these three elements are connected in parallel between the node X1T and the reference level. Now we can see that the mass M2 is having displacement X2T. So we will connect the mass M2 between this node and this reference level. Now we will move on to step number 5 in this case which says that elements causing same change in displacement will get connected in parallel between respective nodes. So in this case we can see that B2 and K2 are having same change in displacement which is X1T and X2T. And that's why this damper B2 and this spring K2 will be connected in parallel between the nodes X1T and X2T. So if we connect the damper B2 and the spring K2 between the nodes X1T and X2T the parallel connection will look like this. We can see here this damper B2 and this spring K2 is connected in parallel between the nodes X1T and X2T. And in this way we are done with all five steps to draw the equivalent mechanical system and we can say that this is the equivalent mechanical system of this physical system. So I hope you got this method to convert the given physical system into its equivalent mechanical system. Now I want you all to practice all these cases on your own and in the next lecture we'll solve some problems based on analogous systems. And we will see that if we convert the given physical system into its equivalent mechanical system, it will make the problem simple. And we can easily apply the force voltage analogy and the force current analogy. As of now, we are done with this lecture. Okay, so thank you for watching this lecture. I'll end this one here and see you in the next lecture.